All right, aviators, we are here to do the pre-flight on a Cessna 172. Now, as I mentioned in the very first video, don't ever go by what your instructor is saying without any proof of written guidance. Every single thing that you're being instructed, ask for the written guidance. So before I even get started in the pre-flight, I actually want to show you where all of this is going to be written before we go out to the airplane. So in chapter four in your POH, you're going to see the pre-flight uh, procedures of the Cessna 172. It actually has a little diagram. Let's see how close I can get to the camera here. Uh, there we go. So here's where you start, number one, and then you go all the way around. You walk around this way, and this is exactly what we're going to be doing. And one, oh, what is number one? Oh, here's number one, and it's, it explains every single thing that you're doing in one. And then it goes into two, and then three, and then four. So this is where you're going to find all of this information of what we're actually going to be going into here in a bit. All right, so here we're going to start with the pre-flight and the aircraft nomenclature. So we're going to get in here. The very first thing you want to check is the aircraft document. So the first thing you want to check if it has the registration and airworthiness certificate, which is right here. We got the airworthiness and the registration. We've got to check there. We also want to make sure it has the POH and the weight and balance. POH is going to be back here. Get this open. And the weight and balance, you're going to see a separate sheet. So anytime that, that there's going to be a, a modification uh, of the aircraft, let's say we, we take this out and we replace it with a Garmin 430 or G1000 or whatever, obviously the weight in here is going to change a little bit. Anytime that it happens, it has to be updated in the weight and balance, which is in the POH that's inside the aircraft. So you definitely want to make sure you have, uh, have those documents in hand. Next, what we're going to do is I'm going to remove the, uh, the gust lock here. I'm, I'm going to try to do this with, with one hand here. Here we go. And then I'm going to turn on all the lights here. And pedo heat. And the lights. I'm going to go ahead and check all the lights, see if they work. Real quick. This is good. I have our nav lights. And you kind of want to do this kind of quickly because... Theoretically, I mean, you're, you're kind of draining the battery right now. So all the lights are checked. Now, the only thing we need in the daytime is, of course, our uh, beacon. Now, we do have our, our taxi light on. You can tell by the one inside closest to the tires is your landing light. That's how I can remember which ones, are, which ones are the two. Anyway, coming on over here, we have our strobe, which is kind of taking its time to do its little strobe thing today. Anyway, uh, we're going to come in here. What we can do, we can take this off, we can feel this. Yes, the pedo heat is working. And of course, we don't really need that in Florida, but we turn these all back off and turn it back off. Run and make sure you put your flaps down too when you do put your uh, put on the lights on so you don't skip that step like I did. All right, next we're going to do is, since we're right down here, you want to check the tires, any treads, uh, make sure the treads are good. You don't want to any, have any flat spots. Here's the rotor. You've got your disc brakes uh, right in there. Make sure they have plenty of life available. Here's your hydraulic line. Make sure that there's no red fluid uh, dripping down. That's going to be a bad thing, so make sure you don't take the aircraft. The empennage, you want to check if there's just make sure any kind of any major damages, you know, you don't want any baseball bat damage in there uh, on the empennage. Here, check two, the surface, the leading edge of your elevator. All right, and for your elevator here, there is these little counterweights right here. Definitely want to make sure that these don't slide out. And the only thing that's holding them in these, these little rivets right here. So make sure that these don't slide out because what will happen was if these do slide out and you try to pull up, well, guess what? It's going to get stuck right there and you're not going to be able to pull up the elevator. So make sure you check for those. These are your static wicks. Make sure that these are obviously intact. All right, and these static wicks, the, the point of these static wicks is, well, on the ground, we have all our moisture in the air, we got all of our humidity. But uh, when you, we go up in the air, obviously we have less humidity the higher we fly. And this is where we spend most of our time in the air. And the last time you rubbed your socks on a carpet and then you touched the doorknob while well, you're building up a bunch of static electricity. When's the last time you actually talked, spoke on a radio with a lot of static or on a walkie talkie with a lot of static? Well, that would be kind of kind of annoying, right? Well, that is why we have these. We have two of these on each of the control services. So we've got 10 total. We've got two on the ailerons on each aileron, so that's four. We have two on this side. We have two on the rudder, and we have two right here. 
Moving on down here, we have our cables. So make sure when you do move the rudder, you move it from the bottom and you wanna check the cables to make sure that it is, that is good to go right here. You have your stoppers right here. These are adjustable per aircraft. So there is no requirement of how many threads that need to be showing or anything like that. So if there's any DPE that are trying to trick question you, uh, that's actually not, there's no right, right answer for that one. Uh, there's the cables right there. You wanna check for both the bottom move the elevator down make sure there's no sticking and binding and you can move the rudder out of the way too if you need to check the uh, the threads in there don't touch the threads because if they are fraying that's gonna it's gonna hurt pretty bad you want to rinse and repeat on the other side same thing there's also stoppers not only for the rudders but there's also for the elevator as well so there's one down there and as you can see as I move the elevator down, it hits that screw and then there's the top one right up there. Again, those are also adjustable. Our trim right there, this is you wanna make sure that this is not touched at all. You don't wanna move this at all because if you're in flying in the air and you're you're constantly yawing to the left or to the right, well, you can, you can actually correct that by manually uh, moving this and you just rinse and repeat and you just trial and error and then you keep moving this until it's uh, until it's um until it's stabilized so once it's stabilized don't really touch this you don't really want to mess with that here's your trim trim tab again then you're just rinsing and repeating all right as we're coming over here in the flaps what we want to do is we kind of when we are flying through the air a lot of wind is going to be hitting this and this material is very is very flimsy it's very it's very lightweight material right let me look at this you can you can i don't know if you can see it on the camera there but it's it's bending it's it's flimsy a little bit so you want to have when the wind is hitting this you want this flap to have some kind of give and that's exactly what we're checking for right here to have some kind of give right there and also right here you want this to have some kind of play uh, so you don't have any warping or anything like that on your flaps when you're coming in to land here as well, you can actually dip this up and down when the, when you have this elevator, uh, this aileron down, that one should go up. When this one should go up, that one should go down. Now this is kind of optional. You can go ahead and check this rod right up in there. But if you do, make sure you hold this up because you gotta think, that one over there is down and if somebody bumps their head on that, this thing is coming down and guess what your fingers are gonna do? Boop. There goes your fingers. Anyway, coming on down over here, um, also just like the same where you have counterweights on your uh, elevator, you also have three counterweights on the ailerons as well. Yeah, I think this is a really, this is a really big aileron and you're only, the only thing you're using to move this big old, these big uh, the surfaces is your yoke. So to ease that, to ease the movement, uh, we put little counterweights right there. So one, two, three counterweights. Of course, you can also check the bolts in there. I mean, if if, uh, if you so choose to. On the side, the the uh, the wingtip, make sure that there's no obvious damages here, no bird strikes or anything like that. And then we're rinsing and repeating with the tire. So tire tread, there's no uh, red fluid. We have plenty of brake pads alive, or disc brakes, or rotors are looking good. And now we're gonna check our uh, some part tanks. So on the Cessna, we're gonna be using the Gats jar today. We're going to sump all 13 sump points. So there's five on each wing and three in the bottom. And what we're checking here is, of course, uh, if there's any water in the tanks. Now, water is heavier than fuel. So if there is any water on the lowest part of the tanks, which is why these these fuel sump points are strategically placed where they are, we're going to find the um, the water in here. If there is any water in there, it's going to look like little bubbles. And also the great thing about this gas jar is if there is any water in there, you can actually still pour the gas out through this filter right here. These little filter, these screens are only large enough to let fuel molecules go through and not water molecules. So essentially I can actually put water in here and dump this back into the tank and only the, only the fuel will come out and the water will stay inside. It's a kind of neat feature that this gas jar has. Okay, now we're underneath. The beast. Uh, this first one right here is going to be your strainer for your fuel selector. This one next right here is going to be the fuel, the drain for your reservoir tank. And then lastly, the very bottom of the engine is going to be right there. So go ahead and sump that. Cool. Before I get out, I want to check these boots right here. 
These boots actually prevent you from getting carbon monoxide poisoning from inside because these rods actually connect to the back of the rudder. So when you press your rudder, the, the rod is going from inside the cabin, through the firewall, in the, in the engine cowling, and out through here. And while you're flying through the air, look what this is. You got your exhaust right there. So your exhaust fumes is gonna actually go back while you're flying. And sure enough, it will find its way up here in the engine cowling, through the firewall, into the cabin, and guess what, you have carbon monoxide poisoning. So make sure you check these as well. Also, the shimmy dampener. When's the last time you went in a grocery car, uh, in a, uh, had a grocery cart, and your grocery cart was, the wheels just wobbling, wobbling like that? Well, this right here prevents that from happening. So that's what that does right there. Also, if you look right here, this actually uh, controls the steering. For you. This connects the rudders to your, to your wheel. However, when the weight is lifted off, so when you rotate, this actually disengages. And so when you're doing your steep turns and you're doing your rudder, this wheel will actually not move. The reason why we have that feature is because if you were to do that nice left or right turn or you had a lot of rudder and then your wheel turned in the air and it got stuck like that well guess what you're going to be landing with your front wheel turned and then when you have that nice soft landing as soon as you put your front wheel on the ground you're going to end up off the runway into the grass so this is why this is a really nice feature to have on the uh, Cessna all right nextly next we're going to move up here we're going to check the oil let's make sure to check the oil now we have, you wanna have at least five quarts according to the POH, a maximum of eight. Now keep in mind that even though it does say, what is that, probably about six and a half there, um, it, the oil filter actually does have a quart. So technically this is actually seven and a half. Cool, cool. All right, and let's, now we can close this. Screws, spinner hub, make sure there's no cracks. All the bolts and screws are intact. The blade, you don't want to make, you want to make sure that this is no nicks or cracks or damages or anything like that. Um, more importantly, you want to make sure that this alternator belt is also intact and it's not corroded or anything like that. You lose your alternator, then you lose your power, then you got to find a landing spot because if you lose this, then you're only running on battery power and who knows how long you're going to have uh, left in power. Look inside here to make sure there's no foreign objects, any bird's nest or anything like that. Air filter is nice and clean. Your static port, this is what tells you, this is what tells us how high we are. It reads the atmospheric pressure and that through that little itty bitty hole. So make sure that that is clear and free of debris. There's our vents for our, our air vents on both sides for our, for our pilot and co-pilot. And then this one is for our passengers. Now this one actually goes all the way down the wing and through there. So on some systems, you may actually see a little screen or some, some material stuffed in there. So if there's any bugs, they won't get lodged way back in there in order to get it out. You don't have to pull this whole thing out or whatever. So that's why sometimes you'll see, uh, see, you'll see that kind of covered up there. Pedo tube, make sure this is not blocked in any way. You can actually test this by actually blowing in it and you can see your speedometer uh, or your airspeed indicator actually increase. Uh, but with this COVID thing going on, I wouldn't do that right now. Anyway, over here is your stall horn and rinsing and repeating. Going over here, leading edge, everything is all good, good to go. And then we do the same exact thing we did on our right aileron. Moving over here, again, making sure there's some kind of, there's some kind of play there. And moving up here too. And that is literally it for that. And that is, and then of course you re rinse and repeat over here. You also check the fuel, uh, some the fuel on this side as well. Uh, on hot days, you might see fuel actually coming out of here. What this is, is that's actually a pressure relief valve. So if when the when the fuel ex when the fuel gets hot, it actually expands. And if you have full tanks, well, the fuel will have nowhere to go. It'll just explode in there. Well, that's why we have a little pressure relief valve right here. Also the same with this tube right down here. You wanna make sure that this is not kinked either because this is also a pressure relief valve for oil. Uh, there's been a, I'll probably put a post or a link in the description, but there has been a, a, a riddle incident where this was actually kinked and the oil pressure actually got too much in the, uh, in the cylinder head and the oil kind of exploded up here and it went all over the windscreen. And then he had to be talked down by uh, the Daytona uh, tower all the way down to the landing. So that was a uh, very interesting, uh, this right here is your, uh, your jump, your jump cable. So if your batteries, uh, battery dies, you can open up this and you can jump 
the aircraft just like you do a car. All right, and that, my friends, is the full pre-flight of the Cessna 172.